All right, guys, let's do it. Welcome to the podcast. We've got Adam Elzey, Colette, my wife, Brittany, all Hi. sitting here at the compound, and I am hyped out of my mind because we just got done drifting hard. That was crazy. That was epic, dude. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I was trying to think of like, um, I was trying to think of how we first connected. Like I don't even know this. When we were in the car, we were ripping it, and I was like, I had so much time to think. <laughs> I'm not sure. It might have been uh, it might have been something on the internet. I, just, I think the first time we met was when you had your show down here in Orlando. Oh, actually? I think. I remember, I think it's when I got my GTR. Mm -hmm. I posted something. I wanted somebody to backflip my GTR. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing Adam LZ Adam in the comments, right? And I remember like, I think that was the first time we ever spoke. I was like, dude, you want to flip my, I didn't even know who you were. Yeah. And I didn't even know how to backflip. So it's probably a bad introduction, but I do remember that. I remember you saying something like you had this weird vibe with backflips. Yep. So you're like, and you were killing it on the bike. I appreciate it. I was like, it. oh, this guy can do it. Um, Tanner Fox, who ended up backflipping it? I don't think anybody backflipped it. Mm -mm. It was that, uh, Rocco, Rocco jumped it on jumped a scooter it. or something. But, uh, your place is epic here. We just did a grand tour of the Adam LZ compound slash I mean, you got multiple business here. Tell me what's going on here. Yeah, so uh, we had a previously just like a normal automotive shop, and then we're looking for another building, a bigger building, and kind of got fed up because it was at the time where the market, where you know you'd you'd find a nice piece of property, and then a cash buyer would swoop in, would buy it, and it was millions of dollars for like just normal sized warehouses. And I got fed up, and I started looking for land. I was like, I'm just going to build my own place. Sure enough, in land there was this crazy compound listed. And it was, it was a ridiculous price and it was like a pipe dream. And when uh, we actually went and toured the property, the real estate agent was like, yeah, you know, we've got no offers on the place. The owners are desperate to sell. So I was like, all right, game time. Game time. It they was, took a low ball. It was such a weird place too. Cause you know, you're not just <clears throat> looking to get a house here and it had all the automotive lifts, the paint booths, so many things just left on this property. Yeah, you randomly found it. Like zooming into land plots and was like, what is that? And That's we, we never thought that we would even get it. We were looking at it like one day we wanted to have a place like this and it just it ended up working out. That's so cool. Was it a big like, was it scary? Was it like enough money that you were like freaking out about it? it so it, like my budget when I was looking for like a, a building to buy was like a little under two mil. This place was listed for four. So that was like unattainable, not even in the it's picture. It's like double your, yeah. So I offered them one seven and they came back at two, three. We wound up getting the place for two. So it was like a little bit out of the comfort range, but I learned a lesson after buying this place. Um, I'd never had cash flow issues and I've always had like a really good float in my bank account, but the down payment for this place, which was 500 grand, that was my float. So I learned like the, the pains of having cash flow issues after getting this place, just because I'd, I'd always had that cushion and then I didn't have it anymore. And then you must have had a lot of like in turning it into what it is now. I mean, this place is dope, dude. It's a paradise for this stuff. Definitely like <laughs> you, you learn what it's like to maintain a property times 10, like water systems, septic systems, AC systems, all times four, you know? Yeah, and I hit you up. I was like, can we rip some cars? And you said you have 30 employees. Yeah, yeah. That is unbelievable, dude. Between Drift HQ and my business and now your employees too. Like it's, yeah. there's a lot. And even, I mean, within a year, so what, it's been like a year and a half since you were at the other warehouse. And then I started basically working there and like would have my cars out back and there was maybe five people there to now it being packed parking lot. Like even when you stay with employees too, you have to run everything so much differently and have policies and structure and like just so much learning, especially for him. Like in the past year, it's, it's been pretty wild. It's a hard thing, dude. I'm so bad with employees. So bad. I just want to be the friend. Yeah. And it's such yeah. a hard balance to be a friend and a, an employer. That's, you know? that's my struggle. She's better at it than me. I'm not good either. Sounds like the same thing going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and with the other layer of the content and the media, you want to film and have a good time with your friends and yeah. hang out. And then you're, there's also now it's so much of a bigger business and other people that rely on other people that there has to be some sort of foundation of structure that... I feel like we're still learning it, but I mean, I think you've grown tremendously the past year. We both took this like business course that I just, I did, you did it first and that's helped tremendously too, but a lot of, a lot of growing, a lot of learning. Oh, I learned something crazy today. You used to drive monster trucks. 
Yeah. I did not know that. I drove so the cool. Wonder Woman truck for like two two years, a year and a half. That is unbelievable. It was it's wild. It's definitely like the most unique machine I've ever driven because there's just stuff you can't do in any other machine in the world than that. <laughs> like when you're doing a wheelie, you're fifteen feet in the air somewhere in a seat trying to control these big tires underneath you but it was fun it's just very brutal on the body i bet dude i see some of them accidents where they just come straight down on their their backs just oh i would be crippled dude i think you were telling me if if your harnesses aren't like super tight in it just that little bit of movement back and forth can give you like crazy concussions yeah so you have to have like a full seat that's made specifically for you like all the way up to the helmet your head doesn't move at all you can only see forward and down and you ratchet strap <laughs> yourself in like you need it tight and every time you go you have to tighten your belts oh and you God. can only move like your hands that would be so hard yeah, you can't see anything you're you just can't locked see. in most people you're not actually looking out the window you're looking down through to the tires and just trying to guess where you're at. So like you get used to it after a while and you drive one handed with one hand on a toggle switch that controls the, the rear, rear steering. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do any flips or try to flips? I didn't try and do flips cause I did arenas at the time and now they're flipping in arenas. Yeah. I feel like that's mm -hmm. like, they have to flip now. That's like the yeah, yeah. flip to a nolly to a kick flip. It's crazy. <laughs> they're getting crazy, dude. That's super crazy. So do you have a number? on how many cars you have or have you lost track? Ooh. I don't I don't have a number, but I know it's over 50. Oh over gosh. 50. Yeah. We're going through and it's like garage after garage. I was like, okay, how many cars? Like, I lost track counting. Dude, I, I like, remember. I just, wonder if he knows. Yeah, I remember just your one car. Like the, 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 the cream one? You brought it to my house. I did donuts in it here in Florida way back when, when I was, I think I was on tour, mm -hmm. broken arm. That was horrible. Yeah. I think that was like the first donut I've ever done in my life. Really? Yeah. In that car. <laughs> yeah, it was in a parking lot too. And you used to haul that car everywhere. Yep. With your bikes. Mm -hmm. Do you still ride at all? I kind of stopped riding. I it was weird. You know, maybe it's like an old injury or something, but I have two herniated discs oh. and it got to the point where I'm, I'm like nervous that if I ride and make it worse, that I'm not gonna be able to do all my other stuff. Cause even like right now, not riding, it's sometimes hard to get through the day. Just like sitting, standing. Oh dang. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably not good coming down on a bike. Yeah. No suspension. But then it's sometimes I'm like, man, maybe it like got bad when I stopped riding and maybe I should ride more <laughs> and then that'll build strength. Dude, I used to love watching you ride, dude. Hard you were sure. so good on the bike. It was so much fun. And you had like this, like, I remember there was a transition where you were like this BMX rider, but you love these cars. And I remember that being a weird transition, and, but you were like all in. Mm -hmm. I remember I could see it in your eyes back then. It was just like, I'm going to, I'm going to be driving these cars. Well, I think it was also one of those things too, you know, when I'm in this role of making, I think it was almost daily videos at the time Yeah. to make a daily video riding BMX. It is so insane on your body. And like the time it takes to make a video, like trying to land tricks, going to the skate park, you spend probably eight times more like energy and time than you would working on a car. So I was already working on cars and I started like bringing my audience into that more. And it gave me another outlet to not like destroy my body to try to make videos all the time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the the longevity of the bike videos would have faded into nothing, probably mm -hmm. either an injury or yep. worse. Um, so now you've got this empire, dude. I know, I know, Adam, you've shown this stuff so much. I'm talking to the viewers here, but being here, it is awesome, dude. I'm super proud of you. I appreciate this is it. epic. And uh, we got a tour of all these cars and it's like a. Uh, Dom Toretto's dream. <laughs> People call it a mix between like Disney World and like Jurassic Park. Yeah. I mean, I saw an armadillo in your bush. Dude. Yeah. I don't have armadillos where we live. That sounded really weird. <laughs> <laughs> saw your armadillo. Um, no, it's super fun. How do you keep your employees in line? Like, I feel like this is a playground, dude. I mean, we've, we've got a really great team. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm thankful. Have you had any issues though? Uh, and, and I wouldn't say issues, but like, we just have to be really strict, you know, when other people want to test a car or something, I, it scares me because, you know, not only do I maybe not know how this person's driving, maybe I don't have confidence in their car and then yeah. I don't know who's watching it. So if someone's driving, that's not me, like there's like 8,000 steps to make sure that everything's safe and locked down when it's me, like we're still pretty structured, but even still, like we'd lock down entrances. We have people on standby watching yeah. out and. I mean, safety yeah. first. Yeah. And safety. with how much freight 
deliveries, mail, like in and out at all times during the hour because we'll be drifting during the day and we just have to take a lot of precautions. Block it all off. Yeah. And, I mean, you got the spot for it, man. How about the hurricane? I saw the I saw photos. Like, how was that? So that gate that you came in, imagine having water. It would be probably up to your steering wheel on your minivan that you pulled in with. What? It was yeah. so bad. Did you have any like real damage? Damage? So one that Drift HQ shop that you were in had a few feet of water, and then the, mm -hmm. our merch building had a couple feet of water. But, Did you have cars in there? So some cars got flooded, not terribly. The worst that we lost was some equipment in that shop, and then quite a bit of merchandise that just was like on that bottom shelf. So mm -hmm. I'd say like 50 grand in damages, but it could have been so much worse. Like so people lost their whole homes. Yeah. yeah that, we like, I've been constantly looking at houses in Florida and Texas and anywhere but Ohio. And I just can't help but think like, the problem with Florida is eventually it's gonna happen. Like it may not be this year, it may not what? be- A flood? Like a bad storm. Oh, like yeah. Like bad, bad. Fair. Right? Yeah. Like that last one was bad, dude. Yeah. Really bad. The weird thing is that like wasn't that bad here. What happened was it was just so much rain and it, it, was, it was strange because it didn't flood at first, but the storm like made its way up north and it followed like a river. So all the water came back down from that river. So like the storm kind of like- nowhere for it to go. So it like hit us like days after the storm is when the water table just started rising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is why we weren't prepared for it. We're like, we made it through the hurricane. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're in the clear, we're fine. So it came fine. late for you. And it started yeah. coming down and then went back up. Super yeah. strange. Mm. So scary. So Which, how long have you guys been together? Ooh. Oh, why do we look at each other like that? Do you guys, <laughs> neither of you know the answer? So it's been three years, right? Yeah, probably yeah. a little over three years yeah. going on that. Okay. And how yeah. did you meet? At a car event? Nope. She slid into my no. DMs on Twitter. No, no, no. <laughs> trying oh. to get me to. No, no, no. This, then, this oh, is going this way is, back. You always say this about this. I, I need to say. I'll pull geez, up the messages. Say your little bit about the Get the, the receipts, show. bro. I still got them. Hey. <laughs> she, she hit me up and she was like, hey, do you want to be on this super cool Red Bull Rally Cross television show? And I was like, yes. Do I get to drive the car? And she's like, yeah. And then she disappeared for years. I dosed it. Actually? Enough. So yeah. to be fair, it was a show that was on like this big network YouTube channel at the time. The show never went through. It happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, sure. It's a normal thing and it never worked out. But I feel like even past that, we sort of just like knew of each other. I feel like the automotive space is still small. I feel like it's rapidly growing now, but I'm trying to think of the, on Instagram, you messaged me first. Actually, I had him up on Twitter first. We crossed paths. For business. We crossed paths you know. at SEMA yeah. like a few years ago and then hung out a bit more of when I was in California like three and a half years ago. Yeah. So no epic like first date, first car date. <sighs> first car date. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> the Mustang. Yeah, it wasn't really <laughs> a first date, first but date. our first, well, it technically wasn't our first track outing, but I guess it, yeah. it would have been our first track outing as a couple. She burned my car down. Okay. This is <laughs> actually, aggressive, aggressive wording. First of all, our first track outing, <laughs> he put me in a car that was dangerous, and I'm so lucky I got out of it before it burned me. It was a, <laughs> it was a stock Mustang GT350. With a factory defect, and the oil filter <laughs> backed itself off when I did six laps, wasn't even driving hard. Boom. A whole the whole thing went out in flames. It was ter terrifying. Oh I felt gosh. so bad. There's nothing we could do. I, I, I did six laps. I wasn't even pushing the car. Boom. It happened. Yeah. Didn't this just happen to you recently? <laughs> everyone <laughs> Different just, car. Everyone. <laughs> right, but okay. put the flame out. like the. So my C6 did catch on fire, and everyone <laughs> keeps connecting these fire stories and trying to say it's Well, me. I'm starting to think there is a pattern. Yeah. Because you're, you're not catching them on fire. I did have a thing. I kind of do <laughs> have a thing with catching cars on fire, too. You've caught a lot of cars on fire. Most recently for me <laughs> is my C6 Corvette that I, we just fully built from the ground up and it was really sad and it burned to the ground but we fully restored it it is back and about to see action again in a few days so. i want to i want to put a disclaimer out here because it sounds like we just have like really <laughs> terrible cars or <laughs> terrible safety procedures it's pretty common for cars to catch on fire in racing especially if you have any leak things are just so hot that the second mm. a leak springs up, like if you had a, a little brake line leak or you had like a little fuel leak on a normal <clears throat> car that you're driving, it wouldn't catch fire. It just drips. But things are so hot, like your exhaust headers or manifolds are glowing red that the second any fluid's there, it goes up in flames and anything else is flammable. That's so, scary. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's why then, we have fire extinguishers. And, <laughs> yeah, and the crazy thing is, is that like was such an epic video, like of that fire, that last one. 
The C6? Yeah. Yeah. It was... I'm, I'm glad, it's going to sound weird, that my GoPro was running because I swear I just froze. Like, when I think back to what I actually did in the car, I was like, oh my gosh, I sat there. I Like, I didn't do anything. And then I watched the GoPro and I was like moving fast. Yeah, it like, looked, I grabbed it the extinguisher. super well done. So I'm, I'm glad I at least had that to mm. at least feel more confident in myself in that type of situation. But it was really unfortunate. I mean, we had a lot of support, people reaching out about it. We got the car back 100% better than it was before and learned a lot as well. I feel like, and you can touch on this too, with drifting, it is growing so fast and it's gaining popularity everywhere. But safety hasn't really grown with that and like the awareness in the sport. And we're very relaxed normally in drifting. And you get to a certain level of cars and they're so crazy that you need to have safety like it's a Formula One car and, and take things a little more seriously. So I think that definitely brought a lot of awareness to that. And yeah, taught a lot of people lessons, including myself. It's so, so. fun. Holy cow. I it's mean, crazy. You know, my biggest thing like is just any car that's been modified, I keep a fire extinguisher. Because yeah. a lot yeah. of times it's, it's like a, it'll be something so small, but if, if you're on the side of the road and you have like a tiny little fire, you can put it out in two seconds. But if you don't have anything, like you're going to watch your whole car go up in flames. Mm. So like anyone that's modifying anything, even if it's like a somewhat stock car, like if yeah. you had a crazy modified GTR, so just keep a fire extinguisher. Yeah. They burn mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Happens. I've, I've yeah. had a brand new car off the lot. 3,000 miles completely burned to the ground. What? Did yeah. you sign something saying you'd never talk about it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh, but, you didn't say anything. Never uh, happened. No, that's happened to me. Yeah. yeah. Like a brand new car. Just yeah. completely nuked to the floor, dude. The whole thing. So, yeah, it happens. Yep. It's like, it doesn't happen often, but there's millions of cars driving around. They're going to catch fire. Yeah. My nose is definitely more fine tuned <clears> now. Now, if there's like a tiny fuel leak, I'll be like, nope. So, something's happening somewhere we're gonna figure this out so it's like it's good to have the extra awareness i could at see least yeah now. you probably it freaks you out a little bit that any moment it can't happen what kind of horsepower are you guys running in these cars it ranges so like there's so many different levels of drifting right you have your let's just call it like a grassroots seat time car that would be like lower horsepower so it's less less maintenance, just very low cost per lap. Those cars make like, let's just say 200 to 300 horsepower. Mm. And then the pro competition cars, those typically make like 1,000 to 1,200 horsepower. That is a huge jump. Yeah. Holy cow. So you can do all that, all that sliding and fun in two, 300 horsepower? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you, know, you just kind of like as power goes up, you add grip. Or as grip goes up, you need more power. Got it. Dude, I, I not only love what the cars do inside when you're driving, but they just look cool. Yeah. Like I love how they look. They're like uh, Hot Wheels cars, like so, cars you play yeah. with as a kid. So that car we were just in, that's <clears> like a good example of, let's just like, that's a mid-tier car. That's like 450 horsepower. It's enough to slide most tracks, but it doesn't have a lot of grip. Mm -hmm. If I took you out in like the blue BMW in there, that car makes like 900 horsepower and probably has four times the grip. So like it would pull twice the amount of Gs. So you'd My be like- gosh. <laughs> in the corners <laughs> passing out yeah i wish brick got to go yeah i'm good next time i know you said that you're like one of these days oh that looks scary she likes extreme stuff do you like roller coasters uh maybe like in my younger years but now i'm just like hmm, what's like i'd rather not risk it the risk for reward is yeah not it's like it's not that exciting to me oh man i could As, do that all day <laughs> but like cars i think i like would like better than roller coasters. it's a lot smoother yeah. than it looks like yeah riding in a, in a race car on a track is so much more aggressive because you're like constantly on that limit of grip slamming the brakes where drifting is like very fluid and smooth feeling mm, okay. so it's, like being it's on ice yeah it's not it's mm. not what you might think man it would have been cool we could have brought both our cars out we could have each given you a ride and we could have tanned them with both That'd you guys in each other's sick. cars next time next, next time, time. Mm -hmm. all right guys real quick showing some love to our sponsors of this podcast seat geek with over 28 million downloads the seat geek app is the number one ticketing app in the world. There are more than 70,000 events on this app every single day. That includes concerts, sporting events, festivals, and more. As you guys know, Brittany and I have used SeatGeek for so many fun events from hockey games, concerts, festivals. We have been to UFC events. It is the simplest, the best ticketing app, period. They even have a lot of events that are on sale currently. Baseball season has started back up. The NBA and the NHL playoffs are here. You also got concerts like Beyonce, Taylor Swift, 
Swift, Drake, these are all on sale on the app. They put all the tickets from across the web into one place to make sure you're getting the best deal. And when you're using the app, guys, there's green dots, there's red dots. Green means you're getting a good deal and red means it's a bad deal. SeatGeek is the only ticketing app that allows you to return a ticket ahead of an event with swaps. This year, guys, I want to go see some football. We're gonna go see some football this year. I didn't last year, I missed it. We're gonna see some hockey. We use the SeatGeek app every single time. The bottom line here, guys, is that you're gonna to go to these events anyway. You're gonna see the concerts, you're gonna to go to the festivals. Why not get the best deal possible? And you guys know SeatGeek is pulling through for you guys. Use code ATWOOD, A-T-W-O-O-D, to get $20 off your first purchase. That's $20 off your first purchase with code ATWOOD, A-T-W-O-O-D. Everything's in the description. Check it out, click the link. We love you guys, back to the show. Mm -hmm. So how'd you go from Monster Trucks to what you're doing now? Or were you already doing drifting, racing before Monster Trucks? Yeah, so I, I actually started in racing and then kind of moved into the media content space opposite sort of, of, of Adam and getting into, he's already in the media, moving into racing, but I started dope kart racing when I was younger, pursued open wheel racing, did rally cross professionally, and then sort of jumped into monster trucks when the United States rally cross series went under. So like rally cross was my everything. The whole series was completely gone. It was a Red Bull Global Rally Cross Series and the Monster Truck. There's actually Monster Truck University. I know a lot of people don't know about that, where they That's hold cool. auditions for potential drivers. They oh, audition wow. like hundreds of people that just get recruited, whether it's from like different action sports. And I did that. It went well, went back for more training and they signed me on. So it was my other racing experience that got me the audition and then Rally cross went under and I was like, let's just, let's do it. Let's do the track thing. It was, it was a really cool experience. That's cool. Yeah. I'm sure it all adds up to just more experience. It does. All those driving abilities and. Yeah. I mean, I, I always, early on in my racing career, I always envied people that were just, they were born into it or like they had the dad that raced and it was passed down generationally and they got to focus on one type of racing. But I don't come from a family that's ever been into racing. I've always had to find a special way to do something. So I've had to jump around in a bunch of different cars, but now looking back, like it's made me, I feel like learn and be able to adapt faster. So the monster trucks came faster to me just cause it's still throttle and throttle control and feeling. Yeah, and you're already running uh, uh, the stick with your other hand. That right? was the weirdest thing. Yeah, the, the rear... toggle. Yeah. I've, I've gotten to do that a couple times. Really? Yeah, with the, the rear steering. Yep. Um, super strange at first, obviously. But I, I, there was a moment in time where I was, I was buying a monster truck. I was like, Wait, I have to have one. Yeah, we'd have them come out to our house. And, like, you know, the driver would let me run it a little bit here and there. And I loved it. I was like, I can smash stuff and, yep. you know, with, for vlogs, you know, but I really enjoyed it. Um, you still, but, you still in all the RC cars? I feel like it's like, that's like the escalation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably <laughs> X-Max to monster truck. No, and then I just realized that they break every time you drive them. It's like, you get a few great minutes and then something's broken. I was like, yeah, I, yeah. dude, I can't work on anything, nothing. So even if I wanted a drift car, when something happens, you guys know how to fix them. Me, I'm like, I gotta find somebody to fix this. So you, you learn by necessity. Like neither of us really knew what we were doing at first, but you just, yeah. you, you love driving so much. It's no different than like, I'm sure you fix your own RC cars. Well, you've put in the, the time same. and the work. No, no. You, you've put in the time and the work, you've learned the craft mm -hmm. because you love it, right? So the truth no, is- a whole shelf of broken ones. I have so many it. RCs. You're, you're telling me you couldn't like change the wheels on the RC car. Yeah, like, no, no. Fix a broken shop. Yeah, no, I can. I, I've built RCs from scratch, so I, I can handle an it's RC. It's the same thing, just bro. bigger, rustier okay. bolts. <laughs> bro, I can fix things. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I can't fix anything. <laughs> I swear. I'm literally useless without a camera and a mic, bro. It's like, that's, that's all I can do. And I can barely do that. Any like, any like hard injuries you guys have taken from all your events and... Driving? Yeah, just like through the whole car career. Probably just concussions for me in the in the trucks. You like actual concussions? Yeah, I had a few. That in the one full time season I did, 
it was like a brutal schedule and I had a few concussions, but I was doing a triple threat series where we did the monster trucks and then we changed outfits and then went and raced UTVs and then we changed again and went and raced ATVs in the same arena. So, Wait, so those are the truck drivers when they switch out like that? Mm -hmm. It's a, you're one person for the whole show. Oh, and you're I didn't just know changing that. Changing these outfits and it's in the same like two hour show. And I just remember getting concussion and then just being like thrown on an ATV and being like, go. And I was like, I'm seeing stars. Let's, <laughs> let's go. And <laughs> I had no idea that the drivers were the ATV riders. Some some events they'll have a different ATV driver. Oh, okay. But for the triple threat series, which is what I was a part of, we did it all. But I don't yeah. like drifting. I really haven't gotten hurt. Yeah, I've been lucky. Wood, most of my there's no wood. <laughs> <laughs> most of my crashes, I've had like proper safety gear. So yeah. you know, like. I've had some where I definitely would have got a concussion if I wasn't wearing a helmet or if I wasn't strapped in properly, but I'm like pretty much a stickler when it comes to like having my harnesses really tight, but that's when people have issues. If the harnesses aren't super tight or they're mm -hmm. not wearing a helmet and they have a roll cage, like I think the worst, I like sprain the thumb because you know, drifting, yeah. if you keep your thumbs in the wheels and you hit a oh, car, it, spins. It, it pulls the wheel. Dude, you want to hear something crazy? I, um, I did the Bristol race. Cletus's Bristol race, oh, yeah. which was epic. I loved every second of it. I did very well. I qualified dead last, mm. and I actually led a few laps. I got all the way up into the front. But we had to qualify before the race, just like you do. And uh, it was my turn. I go out. I qualify, do all my laps, which, by the way, was hard on that track, dude. When I first started, like, the pressure in my head, I was like, I don't know if I can do this race. Like, I'm not used to that. Mm -hmm. But I finished qualifying, and I just got out of my car. I never ever had my seatbelt on at all. Does no Garrett wonder. know that? No. <laughs> He's not <laughs> going to let you race again. Flying around. Oh Full, my as fast gosh. as that thing would go. I mean, I was yeah. flying around fully at strapped in. And I can't even imagine it. At, like, yeah, at a Bristol at a much bigger It was track. like the biggest eye-opening. Like, oh holy crap, dude. Speaking of him, now <laughs> I just remembered my worst crash that I've had in a car. <laughs> it was it was actually, I think it was his older house. We were all hanging out there after an event or something. And he had like this dirt jump. And my buddy had All across a, the pond? Uh, no. no, okay. Uh, yeah. So, but my buddy had a, uh, a Crown Vic there. And I was just like egging him on the whole time. Like, dude, oh. take it off the jump. Mm -hmm. Take it off the jump. Take it off the jump. It was like a turbo Crown Vic. It was pretty cool. He didn't want to do it. So I was like, well, he was like, well, you do it. I was like, all right. Because, you know, if I was going to tell him to do it, I should do it myself. I really didn't want to do it. And, uh, you know, I don't jump cars, so I don't know what a car <laughs> jump supposed to look like. But it's not supposed to be as <laughs> steep as the one that I hit. So it was basically like running into a wall at probably like 40 miles an hour. And then the front end lifted up. And then running into the wall again. And then going up and then coming straight down on the nose. Oh. There's a chance that's where my back pain started. Dang. Because it was... Me and my friend Jimmy, who were both, we were both in the car. We got rocked. Did you? Mm. There's a video of it. Yeah, yeah I'll have to show you. <laughs> we realized you've never right released now. the video. No, it, no, it went out. Okay, okay. But okay. I don't think we realized what got we did it. to our bodies until like years after the fact. Oh, Didn't you yeah. have an car? Yeah. And you yeah. see yourself slam. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And Jimmy, like, I feel like Jimmy wasn't even wearing a seatbelt. Knowing him, he just flies <laughs> in the dash. Oh it was so God. bad. <laughs> oh, those good old nights. Um, do you still have the old house with the skate park? Yep. The, oh, you do. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You still have the, all the wood ramps in the back? Yeah. I feel like that's, that's why he still has that house right now. <laughs> I remember the excitement for that. It was like the coolest thing ever for a YouTuber to just build a bike park in his backyard. It's the whole backyard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, it's still like to this day, it's like one of my favorite things to ride my bike there. I remember joking mm -hmm. about buying the house beside you that was being built. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we lucked out with a really great neighbor. Yeah. That could be so bad with a bad neighbor. Yeah, that's no, cool. He's a great guy. His name's Bill. He's got a Corvette and always got a smile on his face. Loves cars. Mm -hmm. Has he been here? He hasn't. I need to take him here. <sighs> yeah. That's how you make a better mm -hmm. neighbor, right there. <laughs> Come rip it around, man. So what's um, what's what's the future like? What what is your like? I'm seeing what you're building here, but what's the like? What do you want this to all turn into? I mean, for me, it's just kind of. I feel like I'm always in the, the pursuit of trying to perfect everything that I'm my, my bigger picture plan isn't anything more than just like getting everything refined, mm -hmm. which I guess isn't probably the biggest long-term plan, but you know, 
last year after COVID, I just wanted to do everything. I went to every single event. I tried to take place in every single series and I quickly learned like what really made me happy and what was just a, a time suck. Mm -hmm. So this year I took a lot of steps back of going to so many events and doing all the things under the sun to try to like really just do the things that are important to me and that make sense for the brand. Um, and then with that, we basically doubled down on an event that we did last year in Ireland where we had our own event that was basically everything that I love about drifting all in one place, like super cool cars at the car show, awesome drivers that are great people, like a super fun competition that's fun for the drivers and has enough structure to like make you excited, but also laid back enough that no one really takes it seriously and like it's a fun show for the crowd. Mm. So we took that and then basically now we're doing four of those stops this year in different countries. And hopefully next year we'll add a few more to the roster. You ship a bunch of cars too? Uh, it usually makes more sense to either buy or rent cars in other countries. But like my inspiration behind that world tour is what we're calling it is thinking back to like watching Viva La Bam when mm. I was younger. And what made those videos and those experiences was that all your friends are together in these different countries. Yeah. So to like have an avenue or something that gets all our friends together in these random countries and these cool places I feel like it's way cooler than being here doing the same places over and over again. Yeah. Dude, how, how much have those, like, Viva La Bam and CKY and Jack, how, literally shaped so many of us YouTubers. Yeah. Like, it created such, like, we, we, we just had Rob Deerdeck on the podcast, and I'm thinking of, like, without Rob Deerdeck, like, so much of my inspiration comes from this guy. It's like all these, like, who are we creating, right? Yeah. No. It's like... For sure. Like, so cool. I feel like I would have been way more closed minded if it wasn't for people like that, like Rob and his fantasy factory and Dude. seeing Bam like saw off the roof of Lamborghini. It just like really is like, you can do you anything. You can do that? Yeah, yeah. Like, you can do that? Like, otherwise, it would just sound like the most ridiculous thing. Yeah, but you're now, just an like, idiot. That's like the new crazy. So <laughs> anything below that's normal. Facts, dude. Yeah. I, I miss, like, I was just being with your merch and being it all here, it made me miss, like, our YouTube house where we did our merch and we had, this is where everybody came and we just created content. We don't do that anymore. Like we don't have that. I kind of missed it today. Like seeing all your stuff. I was like, it's just like home sweet home. You know, it's all what? <laughs> Chase is laughing because my face must have been very scared. About what? <laughs> Having another YouTube house. Oh yeah, no. I don't miss it that much. <laughs> I want to I wanna know what that transition was like. Cause you know, I, I definitely think I'm at the point where I don't want to say I want to take a step back from YouTube because that sounds scary, no. but I, I really do want to find a way to, you know, make less is more in, ter in terms of videos. Yeah. I think I've just hit a spot where it's just passion at this point. Like mm -hmm. I have to do things I, I like on video now. Um, this is the first trip we're not vlogging. Like our, usually we'd have somebody vlogging for us and filming it. And today I literally was telling Jay's, I was like, it feels so good to just be sitting here today without a camera. Like it feels good. But you're know? also posting everything on Snapchat. So it's like, you're still filming the behind the scenes, but they get to see it instantly. Yeah. But it's still way less than a vlog. You know, it's less. Yeah. It just feels good to live life now off camera. I really enjoy it. But that took forever. Yeah. That was a painful process, dude. So much as like, I didn't want to do anything because I wasn't filming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, wait, I can actually live life without filming. That sounds terrible to think we had a whole kid <laughs> off camera yeah it's like <laughs> that sounds so crazy I, I think it took a full two years to like now i do fun things without a camera right and like yeah maybe we snapchat or whatever but i i do a lot of stuff off camera um literally flying helicopters now and i don't i've never filmed it it's crazy i feel yeah. like when when we started dating colette had i already started to make the shift of like filming less personal stuff I don't know, I feel like it was a mix. You you had just started maybe like a few or many months in, started going every other day. Yeah. Versus the every day. Yeah, when we met, so I was still was, daily and then I going every other day was crazy. It was like, wow, I can I can live now and I don't even make yeah. a video every day. But I think maybe more so in the past year or so, it's such a double-edged sword, right? Because I love bringing my audience along for all those little nuanced things, yeah. like going to the gas station, or getting coffee, or yeah. going out shopping and stuff like that. But here I've really structured it to kind of, you know, my videos usually take place in the nine to six day. 
afterwards, whatever we do, if we go on a cruise with our cars or we go out to eat, like if I film anything, it's like one clip on my phone, yeah. which sucks because some of that's like the moments that people want to see. But I feel like for my, my sanity, I really had to draw that line of separation. It's good that you see that though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a, a lot of people just run themselves to the floor and that's, that's, that is a double-edged sword. It's like the viewer, like there's plenty of people that are really upset that I don't daily vlog anymore. I don't even post much anymore, but like you said, for my sanity, for the health, yeah, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. So I found this podcast, which I love. It's so fun. I love it so much. But it has its own challenges too. But it's like, yeah, I can live off camera for almost a whole week. Make a podcast. The old Adam would have like, I would have been stupid not to put a GoPro in the car when we were going and taking the car around. Right. Like, Give Roman a ride at yeah. the compound. But now it's just like, man, like especially with so many guests and old friends coming to visit this place, I just want to like enjoy it and be present. And it's yeah. so tough to do that. And also think about making a good video Yeah, that it's when you're vlogging, you're vlogging. Yeah. That's it. That's the only thing that matters, dude. And we, we all daily grinded forever. There was something special about that time though. Mm -hmm. Like the, the daily grind time of YouTube was so cool. Like everybody was doing it. It's like we all knew each other. It was like, it was, it was a cool time. I feel like YouTube's missing a lot of that now. Yeah. Like who's collabing anymore? I feel like there's there's still pockets. Like the automotive community, I feel like Auto is, is booming. Is really like booming. I don't want to say it's super close knit, but like everybody kind of knows everybody and like there are a lot of collabs and stuff and maybe it's just easier and more natural for that to happen, right? Because, you know, people build cars together, or they sell a car and like Yeah. I think maybe vlogging was special because it was so personal. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you knew you knew where our toilet paper was in our house like the extra like you knew everything about us yep. right and you knew everything about you and where you were riding and i don't know it was a special time it was definitely uh i'm thankful for it but i'm also like to the point now where i just like you just said like just hop in a car and do something fun don't yep. have to film it don't have to show it just like it's weird that that's a thing <laughs> i don't know if i've if i've ever told you this but i've, I've said it in videos before back kind of when I was in that that period in BMX where every single video, it wasn't really vlogs back then. We, we'd call them webisodes and they were kind of like vlogs, but it was more so just like skate park tricks and banter at the skate park. During that period where I was getting hurt so much, that's when I, I kind of caught on to your videos and I was like, interesting. So like, you know, I kind of like started, um, I don't want to say drinking the Kool-Aid, but like starting to get to know you and your family. And I was like, it's so smart. Like I feel so connected to this guy. Like if I could figure out a way to do this, with the BMX world and start to bring people more into my life. I could still do what I love doing, mm. but then I have all this other stuff that I can film. So I started doing that. Sure enough, people liked it. And then fast forward, everybody in BMX started vlogging. But yeah. like you are the the person for me that gave me that shift into the the vlog verse. That's so, dope. That's awesome, man. Thank you. And I hate you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still have your bike you gave me, dude. Hell yeah. It's in my garage right now. I that's love cool. that thing. Um, dude, we've done some fun things. I remember coming down here and you trying to teach me how to do a 360. Remember that? Mm -hmm. The skate park? Mm -hmm. I think country was there. Yep. JJ, dang, that's good times. JJ's so big now. Dude, he's huge. I, I saw him today. We, we went to his high school and got him out of school today. That's cool. Aww. That's so he fun. He must have been so excited. Yeah, it's so fun, man. Just cool. I'm surprised nowadays you can still walk into a high school, though. Like, we just walked in, signed him out. Let's not really? get on that topic. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> walking up, I was like, they just gonna let us? Yeah. That feels weird. No, even like when I went, I went back and like visited my old <clears throat> high school probably like four years ago and even that felt weird. There's like locks and gates and all this yeah. procedures and stuff. And I'm like, before anybody could just walk in. Dude, for real, I remember it was such a crazy thing if they locked our school doors. Yeah. Like actually crazy. Like everybody threw a fit. You can't lock the doors. We're not prisoners. Yeah. Now you're like begging the school to lock the doors. That's crazy, dude. Bad topic. <laughs> Let's keep it fun. Dude. Yeah. I don't want to get on that. Mm. Um, so you guys engaged or just boyfriend, girlfriend, get boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah. I didn't know if I missed that, <laughs> yeah. missed that window. Um, no, no kids. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. We've got three <laughs> off camera. You know. No, I mean, two, like, we have two, two kids, actually. Two. Any kids plans. That's what I meant. Like you guys want to have kids. Well, we have yeah. two already. The, the little... The chihuahuas. Yeah, the little chihuahuas. <laughs> yeah. Almost got eaten by an armadillo today. <laughs> yeah, they would have protected you. Bro, she's you know? on it out there. We're Guys, we're in Florida, and there's just life everywhere. It's like Avatar here. But you're on it. You're like, what was that? What I was gotta that? be. I have two tiny little chihuahuas. Anything and everything can get them. Snakes. Water moccasins or like the rattlesnakes around here from big the sky. Big rattlesnakes. For real? Birds. Oh, big. 
like scary from the sky. We're All the big moving. birds. Bears. I was telling you, bears. bears. There's, There's no way. We had a bear here. A big black bear. Here. Bears. Here. Yep. On Florida property. Panthers. A Florida Panther. We have them. Bobcats. Like the football player. He was here. If it's if it's in Florida, <laughs> like if it lives in Florida, it's probably on this property. Coyotes. Yeah, because you you got a how many how many acres you have? Thirty. And it's crazy because we are completely fenced in, barbed wire. Yeah, how does a still, bear get in, bro? You have a hole. You have a leak. You have a, a bear leak. There's a family. It was a, it was a mom at one point when we first got in here and two little babies and then How did that work? I, I don't know how they get did in here. Did you shoot but they the do. bear? No. No, no. So it's just living in the woods? No, they just, they just leave. Yeah, eventually they Same thing with they the gators. The how, it's fenced in, though. How did he even get in here? Uh, so there's, I mean, we don't know. has to be a hole somewhere. <laughs> there but. has to be a hole somewhere, bro. <laughs> I don't, they just that's a away. smart mama bear though so i think the gators like they might go through there's like a couple like big pipes that connect to maybe other bodies of water like ponds and stuff and maybe they like swim through them we need to gate off the pipe because we'll we'll that's go from we... seeing like multiple gators to just no gators for months bro the way you both looked at me when i said you shoot that bear <laughs> <laughs> like no dude that's messed up that's messed up i feel so bad but yeah I've, i'd ought to be on guard with my little chihuahuas anything can get them so i am just like all the noises you definitely I have hear it. yeah you already have the mom instinct though mm -hmm. you're like it's getting dark you don't want to be out here at night so. <laughs> right. i don't know if we want to move to florida at least not okay this is We're this is the swamp yeah you, okay. this is like you're you nowhere. are living in their land yeah yes. right it's not like yes. It's not like they're living on your land. You are truly on their land. What's the big like wilderness preserve in Florida called? Because we're pretty much connected. Florida Reserve? No, I don't think it's that. <laughs> there's like a there's like a section that that's where all like the things what? live. Okay. The Everglades. Oh, the Everglades. It's, it's they're like basically like a, a little frog could hop from the Everglades all the way here, without having to go through like civilization. Yeah, yeah so. you're just mm -hmm. in you're in their world. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty awesome. You could, you could open up your own little petting zoo out here. Yeah. Adam Elsie's. One day. It's just another... That's not in my long-term plans. <laughs> I can tell you that. I can tell you other things I don't want to do. So you're doing the um, the other business here too, mm -hmm. right? Tell me about that. Yeah, so Drift HQ, um, we, it's a it's an awesome group of guys that and girls that uh, basically, you know, it's a, it's a part sales company. So we sell a lot of parts that are really focused in the Drift community. And it's something that I had started to do under my brand, LZMFG, and I started carrying the parts that I used in videos and stuff. Um, but... It was such a slow expansion because there's so much knowledge and time that goes into really building out like a part sales business compared to a merch business. Uh, so it worked out to be able to um, acquire and become partners with a guy named Duarte and his company Drift HQ, um, who's a super smart dude. And he kind of took the reins and we were able to put our heads together, move it here and bring in a bunch of more awesome people and just kind of so grow cool. it together. I love that it's on the property. Mm -hmm. It's like you're seriously building like an empire here. It's awesome. And the authenticity too, from like being a drift <clears throat> company and having all the builds being built right here in the same place, drifting taking place. It, I mean, it really is like all the people that work for us, they have their own builds, they drift their cars. So it, that's always been something that's important to me, especially coming from the BMX world. That's like so guarded from anything that's not mm -hmm. authentic. In drifting, I kind of think about it with the same perspective. That's cool, yeah. yeah. Um, dream cars, you got to have them. What's, what's the, what's the, what's the absolute dream that you don't have 50 cars. Can I say yours and you try to guess what mine is? Okay. Well, cause I know what yours is. That's, that's, a, this is a loaded question and it's ah. hard for me to, I really, I don't think it's that one. I don't know. Your dream car is a Countach. I know you're going to yeah, say that. Right? Yeah. I don't even know like an old is. Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the funky, super weird looking one. Like the old boxy and, ones. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. <laughs> Yeah. I had a poster when I was a kid on my wall of a Countach. Countach. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. Super cool. I don't know, but like dream car or is it like dream build or like, I don't know. That that's, question? A, that's a dream car. You wouldn't build a Countach. You'd get it and you would. That's you would... it. Yeah. I guess a Countach <laughs> could be in that category. Yours. Is it one that you already own? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> that's why I wanted you to do it because I don't know if I know the answer. I know. I'm trying to think. Just say something. I'll be like, yeah or no. Something, anything. Some... <laughs> ultra rare like 400 r some some car that's just very low like a japanese low, yeah a low amount of them made rare and special i feel like you really like to find special cars that have like a lot of meaning behind them or a special story of a small shop that they were built in um it's fair the, the thing with that though is especially in the world of cars right like a 400 r great example but there's so few of them that this is a this is an r33 gtr millions of dollars mm. i don't think i could ever justify that well, it's but a dream. dream true car fair 
but I just like I wouldn't I wouldn't enjoy owning it because I wouldn't do anything to it and I wouldn't, wouldn't drive, drive it. it. So I try to find like the the other end of the spectrum, which would be like let's just call it a base R33 GTR, but in the coolest color that's maybe a rare color versus the super crazy limited like race inspired version that's worth millions of dollars. I might pay eighty thousand to a hundred thousand for one. He wanted yeah. me to guess that. He what? wanted me to guess no, that no, specific no, no. Range. That was just a good car. It was a great point because like my dream cars are usually like that example that's like the best of that car's like generation without being totally unfeasible to own big money. Yeah. If that's terrible. Most people are like Ferrari. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean Ferrari's yeah. yeah. That's that's the typical What's your like, dream car? That's the yeah. typical reach for as a kid, right? Lambo, Ferrari. I don't oh, know. What's your dream car? I don't know. I, I bought my dream car. It's a 1980 Toyota pickup truck. It's like all restored. It's beautiful. Slower than turtle. It does about 60 miles per hour. <laughs> Can't go anywhere with it. I never drive it. I don't know if I have a dream car, honestly. Yeah. Never been like uh, too too big into owning like a sweet car. But I think cars are dope, but I just, I don't know. She just bought her dream car this, last week, week before. Yeah. Um a G63 G-Wagon. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Yes. She it's got her pretty. little AMG. It's sick. It's cool. Seriously, her it's dream car. It's pretty and has power. I've so heard her talk about this thing it. for so long. Have you seen Colette's G-Wagon, the, the purple one that she was driving around? No. I don't think. The, the golf cart. Oh, that's your G-Wagon? Yeah. yeah that's, um, I'm, I need to get the Mercedes <laughs> logo that's her swamp and wagon. put like, the little G-Wagon thing on it's the back of it. It's a gator getter right yep. there. The gator getter. Get away from my dogs. <laughs> Imagine now I just see like a shotgun. Adam, there's a bear. <laughs> yep. It's getting dark. Get inside. Is that your impression of me? I don't, me know. For a I don't Hold know. up. I think when I think of gators, I think of, I don't know that redneck voice. I don't know. Get him. Get the gator. Get <laughs> Honey, get inside. But we don't shoot gators either. Yeah, that's the thing yeah. that baffles me. Hey, if it's, it's fair game, if it's coming at me yeah, or course. my dogs, like I will jump on a gator <laughs> and gouge it. No, don't eyes. jump on it. Yeah, if it, it's getting the dogs. You, you're just supposed to like douse your eyes out, I think. Just, I just know, Krav Maga <laughs> style. <laughs> <laughs> if they're going after my dogs, I'm going after them. They better watch it. That's how people die. Hey, Didn't I Didn't a lady just get okay, eaten trying to save her dog? All of the... Yeah. Let the dog go. Rift to the... No. There's been a few <laughs> alligator incidents, but it's usually like older people that are going into the water and then they just get got. And it's really sad. They just get got. It's like, it's What happened to her? Up. She got. She yeah. died. Ben had gotten to get... Get, get but I God. saw a video of a guy that a dater went after his small dog, like fully like had it in its mouth. And the dude got him, got the dog oh, back. Yeah, he went down in the water and went pulled down in him up. like, yeah, that's a, hit him in the face that's or something. That's a badass guy right there. Yeah. So, I that's mean. It's going to be her she if one up. comes close. Yeah. Hopefully, they're not getting anywhere. If that ever happens, can you just use that voice for me when you're. <laughs> I'm gonna, get Give me my dog, <laughs> damn gator. <laughs> So how do y'all not hunt gator? Because they, they obviously are populated. You're not allowed to. I think there's like a specific type of season and you get, you're get no, allowed to like kill like one or two gators. Over If it's over five feet, you can get them. No, no, no. It's, I don't even want no, to say you, shoot you them. You still can't shoot I thought, them. They I get, you can't. No, so what, what happens is if it's over a certain length, that's when they will come and relocate the gator for you. Where mm. do they put the gator? Gator land. Gator land. But, <laughs> Gator land. But you're not allowed to I shoot them it. except during like a specific hunting season. And I think you are like, you're given almost like tokens for the amount that you can hunt. I think you can hunt like two. So yeah. it's, it yeah. might so be it's maybe like deer wrong, for us, but, right? Like certain times of year we can hunt deer. Yeah. Even though they're mm -hmm. everywhere, they're smashing into mm -hmm. our cars. Yeah. So I think technically they're an endangered species. Gators. The gators. I think. <laughs> There's no way. Not in Florida. I they're think. not. Not in Florida. <laughs> not in Florida, dude. Ron DeSantis know. won't allow that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. There's no way. There's no. Maybe they're not. I feel like the manatees were, but they just like that was a came thing. out of extinction. I think we should just make a bunch of stuff up. Yeah, <laughs> people take the cliffs and run with. <laughs> Y'all got mass mass gator problems. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I, we we took um, a few weeks ago. We were down here in Florida. A fan boat. Down here in Florida, and we were uh, airboats. The, the big airboats, air dude. So much power. That's the first time in my life that I've seen an alligator in person, really? not in a zoo, not like just in, in the wild. And we're shooting down these little streams and they're just hopping everywhere. And there's big birds and there. I felt like I was in Jurassic Park, literally. 
That's one thing that I'm not not gonna do. What? What happened? Those things they fall over. What happens to you? You well, you're dead. Like, <laughs> though, and those you got already you seen, got got. You will get got, and I. Just, I think you'd be all right. They're they're more scared of us than I, them. They did all run from our our hover boat. Yeah, but what happens when it is not moving and making hovering noises, and you're just there, and you get knocked out? Because yeah, like, there's probably yeah. A statistic of hover boat <laughs> pilots being eaten. Got to be. It's got to be low. He's thinking about all those guys have guns on them too, right? So yeah, they're can I, can gator I, can I, can guys. Can I say the G word on the podcast? They're gator guys, dude. What's the G word? Oh, yeah, the G word. Oh yeah, I yeah. think yeah, I don't the know. The way you whisper it, yeah. I know. Like, well, you can't say it on YouTube now, right? You can say it. Oh. Yeah, you can educate you, about a pew, it. Pew pew. That's probably more flag than. Oh yeah, the hand, the hand gesture is not worse. <laughs> flag. No, I think I think I think that's fine. Um, when I post a video, I, you can actually select what you talked about. Really? And it'll tell you ahead of time if it's still monetized. So hmm. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'll let you know. <laughs> you can always chop that part out. <laughs> just bleep gun, gun. <laughs> just can't say Let's it 13 times. Let's just say times. it 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. We like Florida a lot. It's really enjoyable. I, don't, I haven't spent a lot of time in the harsh summer, which I've heard is like pretty mm. brutal. You don't want to. Because even today where I was like, First thing I almost the first thing I said to you when I when I saw you was like this weather you're like it's so hot I know and 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 this isn't even hot right for Florida it gets so much worse this is nice yeah. this was a great day it was beautiful man I, I was like can't even tell you the last time we drove a car with our windows down it's months. just cold back home months mm -hmm. dude it's like 29 mm. yesterday it's frigid I like the cold <sighs> it's it's no, a love I hate. <laughs> It's, I love the cold for a little bit. That's true. I, yeah. I did always hate, like, everyone's so unmotivated in the winter, like, because I grew up in Connecticut, and just no one ever wants to do anything. Like, I feel like everything closes sooner. No one wants to go out and do stuff. Everyone's just a like, home buddy in the winter. I feel like you lose energy. Yeah. Like, you haven't seen the sun, no vitamin D. You're just, like, buying time. Yeah. Because the sun comes out, we're, like, back ready to go. Yep. You know, it's weird. It's all, it's all, it's all mental. But, dude, we're sloshing through mud. It's barely above freezing and trying to feed our chickens and you just get tired of it. Yeah. yeah. So other than the dogs, what do you guys, I know you got bears and gators. Any other pets? Uh, well, I, th I thought you were going to ask all the things we've seen on property, but mm -mm. no. No other pets. Oh, just the chihuahuas. Yeah. Just you should get a guard dog for your chihuahua. So like I thought an about anti -gator. it. Imagine. No. It's like their own bodygguard yeah. dog. <laughs> I did like think about one. it. I wanted like a, a pit bull, but the, the stubby ones. So the ones that have like all the muscle in the front. So I wanted to oh. rescue a little short pit bull that matched Pete's colors. Bro, wouldn't the pit bull eat your kids? Because oh, they're bodyguard. Don't them things just bite people? No, oh they're gosh. sweet. They don't bite people. It's, Why? Every story I see of a kid bit. getting his head bit is a pit bull. Bad owners. Bad people. Dogs don't bite people. Owners. Owners bite dogs people through their dogs. People. Bad People can make uh, dogs mean or right, bad what or dog ha statistically has the most bites, dude? I really don't know. I didn't maybe like Rottweilers or that's all like I, think I don't want to be. Bro, you can't sure. be blaming the rots. The rot don't put the rots into this, dude. Rottweilers, I don't know. German Shepherds, it's pit bulls. Is it though for it's real? It's pit bulls mainly. Let me, let me look. Mainly because yeah, we got to figure this out because this is a hot topic. I feel like there's not a lot of country folk with pit bulls, right? They're usually in inner city. They're in tight corners right more okay. kids around <laughs> they're street dogs dude they're fighters Country folk. <laughs> Country folk. we have german shepherds we have labs we have like uh, my german shepherd was a little biter though yeah, yeah. He, he was went, yeah. he went after a couple he people. was feisty so i will say that can happen but pit bulls dude i swear every story is a pit bull Kid just lost his face. It was a pit bull. Maybe, but maybe pit bulls are like the aggressive biters. Maybe there's dogs that bite more, but like aren't harming people. Yeah. There's I a lot know. more pit bulls that are in like illegal dog fighting, like underground. Why do you think that is? Underground. Well, they're a muscular build. They're but... built to kill. <laughs> they're built to kill. Or protect chihuahuas. Or eat your <laughs> chihuahua. That. <laughs> or. You need a dog a to protect guard. yourself from the. The, the new dog. I've never heard of a dog to protect one. the dogs. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Body dog. Okay, are you guys yeah. ready for this? All right, okay. I want to hear us, it. Hit us. What's okay, the, the number one attacks is at 3,397. It's a chihuahua. For a pit bull. Oh. Let's no! go, dude. That dog is mean. The number right. two I was for attacks is the rot. At okay. 500. Oh, was a rot? Was That's number a, two? That's 500 a, a year? Yeah, 500. It's a huge gap. 
Wow. So, but if you think yeah, about like 2021. Five, pit bulls, 500 a year, that's that you're more likely to get into a car accident. That's the rot though. There's 3,000. Yeah, but still, look at the gap, bro. Yeah. Pit bulls are problems. <laughs> yeah, but 3,000, how many pit bulls do you think there are? There's got to be a lot more. 3,000. Okay, no. that's just attacks. <laughs> do you want to know the death numbers? Oh, there's, okay. Let's, like dogs that kill. Let's go there. Like dogs, dogs that kill. Dogs that kill. Oh, okay. that's a bad dog. Pit bulls have killed, in 2021, there was 295 deaths from pit bulls. That is a lot. That's <laughs> That is quite a bit. Yo, if anything that can kill a human, bro. Yeah. Rats were eight. German shepherds were 15 deaths. Wow. Mm-hmm. that's. I mean, shepherds are big dogs. Dude. Damn, that is a lot. And those well, are police I wonder dogs. how many of those pities were like former fighting dogs and then mm, let loose true. or like, like made to be aggressive because usually it is the humans that are making the dogs aggressive mm-hmm. or that train them to be aggressive or like they have a bad owner and they get turned that way but that's i was trying to hold it down for the pit bulls out there i mean you called on the rots are number two yeah by a long shot number two though yeah it's three thousand to five hundred oh man pit bulls freak me out and obviously there's great pit bulls right there's plenty of owners with wonderful pit bulls until they're not Mm -hmm. (laughs) until they're not and they're did my mom just gobble in their arm yeah yeah moose yeah Moose is a pity. They do look cool. Those big, beefy, I like the meaty little, ones. Yeah, with like the short, stubby legs. With the pecs legs. and the abs. Yeah. Dude, like the cartoon dog, Spike from Tom and Jerry. Is that a pit bull? I don't know what that was. <laughs> no. Pitties anyway, let's nice. let's go get a pit bull tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's different having one as a puppy, but like a rescue, I think you run the risk a little more. Yeah, you never really know what they've been through. Yeah. Makes but there's, I mean, even if it was like a rescue Rottweiler or a, like a shepherd, I feel like the rescues are like... You gotta really spend some time with them mm-hmm. before you do them. But pits do get a bad rep. I feel bad. They do get a bad rep. I but I why. statistically, <laughs> yeah, statistically though, I that did not make them look better. It's a good so. thing they can't hold a gun. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that'd be a bad dog right there. My cousin uh, had two pits, and he moved in with my grandma, and she had our two cats when we moved, and they killed <gasps> both mm-hmm. cats. Both our cats. But yeah. like, did, was there signs in the beginning? Any sign of yeah? Like, the oh, sign was there's a pit bull. That's the number one sign. And they like jumped on my grandma. She has like that old oh. skin that just. I know people bad. right now that have pit bulls are hating on me so hard, but it's just statistics. Statistics, like, I, I can't argue. I'm not. So, yeah. <laughs> like I'm just doing the math here. But yeah, the I mean the way they were raised. Yeah. I don't talk to that cousin, so. That Bro, shows. <laughs> did you see uh, what's his name? Hasbulla? Is that how do you say his name? Beating up that cat. Oh my god! You gosh, see that video? The, um... Bro, I'm like, how does a kid? Uh, a kid? How does? It's not a kid. The whole world loves this guy, and then he re- has this video come out of him like smacking this cat, punching this cat, dude, and pulling his ear. Um, like, hmm. How do you have the whole world love you and then screw up like that? What did? Why did this, they love him? As soon do you not as know I who show this is? The picture. Mm-mm. You have. You've he definitely like seen a... him. He's a very viral world isn't he i don't want to say like a funny sure. person. I say russian russian where's he from he's not uh, oh maybe. he might be actually yeah. yeah he might be you know i've never heard of him that's wild that's bro. messed up I'm you like, really I'm you really sheltered like yeah, i don't really this. have time to mm-hmm. just look on things you don't spend much time on social media we watch like a netflix show like try to every day and that's like pretty much the extent of it good for you dude. if i'm scrolling on social media then i'm like real mad at myself really because i should be doing something else that's good man i get trapped in it all the time dude i get on instagram and just start scrolling forever what's your guys's go-to netflix show right now i think what, what are we on right now shadow and bone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shadow and bone. what no. is the the lock lockwood and co yeah that, that one was one. cool too they're both yeah. like spooky like this one like is very very reminiscent of like a like a Game of Thrones, but it's magic based, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like magical or murdery. Mm. Oh God, living out here watching murder stuff. That's okay. why you don't go outside at dark. So I don't like watching the murder. <laughs> no stuff wonder alone. you're on edge all the time. <laughs> now it makes sense. Something I hear like the little movement in the tree. And it's, just a cl- it's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Yes, yeah, armadillo or an alligator. We have ghosts here too. Like Oh, yeah. You'd have to. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. What, what, was the, what was the story? Was it mm. you that experienced it? Or someone was telling me the story that knew exactly what happened. But basically, uh, Sean, he's a, a guy that works for me, really fun dude. He, uh, I think he was smashing some cabinets around. Did you he, tell me this? 
So you guys, there's, it used to say dad's toy shop before you go into the main shop. It was the former owner, Bob's sign. And we left it up there for like a year. And then one day Sean takes it down and I said, I said, Sean, you shouldn't have done that. Oh. And he was like trash talking when he was throwing it away, like get this crap down and whatever, making a big deal about it. I'm like, you better watch it. And then I guess when he came back later that night, the whole kitchen downstairs, all the cabinets were open and like stuff was spread everywhere. And he was the only one here and he heard some wrestling and no one has owned up to it if that was them or not. But daddy's looking think, for toys. We, we I say it was we have, Bob that got mad and rightfully so. We have Bob sightings sometimes. He'll be mm -hmm. usually likes to hang out up here. Yep. I'm not just saying that, like, like in this room, mm -hmm. like, well, people will just say they'll be at night and they'll just be like, yeah, was someone upstairs. No, they'll hear well, I heard noises up there. Like, mm -hmm. is that uh, who built the sink over here? No, 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 no. <laughs> that was the last project in this whole sink. room was the last thing they were building. Well, Bob, it's been nice. <laughs> nice talking with you bro <laughs> we're Small. keeping the the cars going though i think i think it's cool that you know it got passed down to another car environment is versus... bob is bob alive no bob no. bob passed away i think he passed away here but his daughters yeah. are still alive and they're the ones that we bought the property from so bob would be proud like mm. you the daughters Who, are stoked to see like imagine yeah imagine you mm -hmm. finding this place right like this could have been anything yeah right that's super cool, man. It's meant to be. It's we're, meant to be. We're doing the same thing that he was doing, just with like newer Japanese cars instead of old American cars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaking Bob, Bob, dude. Yeah, there Bob, he goes. Yeah. Bob, chill, bro. <laughs> He's yeah, done good on this place, man. He had so like cool. 200 plus cars. It was crazy because some of the keys were left here and they're all late 1950s. We saw all his keys to all his cars. 60s. No way. Is there any cars on the property? Was there anything? No, no we want to find one though. We want to like There's got to be something buried back there, dude. Bob's got something buried. You probably got gold on this property. It'd be cool. You start metal detecting, bro. Adam the LZ's mm -hmm. metal detecting YouTube channel. Yeah, would, that, would that be a normal thing for someone to bury gold? Well, it used to be. Really? Yeah, it used to be. Old property like this, old Bob. Bob. It'd be fun to get some metal detectors and see what we could find. You find so much trash, but I found a bumper in the woods. <clears throat> yeah. Like an old Ford bumper. Bob's bumpers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Just yeah. Don't this... do it at night. Yeah. <laughs> Not at night. Gator detecting. <laughs> Dang gators. <laughs> that would be cool. There's gotta be something here. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Probably, probably, probably a bunch of oil cans buried. <laughs> yeah, there's so much trash in the ground. Like even mm. out by us, like I will randomly metal detect. Like, I'll get this kick of like metal detecting. I think it's fun for the kids. You, no matter where you go, you just dig up so much trash. Really? Like, we have a big property, it's a couple hundred acres. Um, there's nothing there. It doesn't look like ev anything's ever been there ever. And you still dig up trash. Like what? Like, give me an example. Like, what kind of trash? Tons of bullets. Pop cans. Really? Pop cans, oil cans, just trash, dude. It's everywhere in our ground. Oh. Even in places that you're like, there's never been a human here. There's trash, for sure. Weird. Old wow. campsites, maybe, or the old Oregon Trail, man. Who knows? Yeah. You probably got a bunch of pirate treasure in here. Yeah, it'd be interesting, too, because this place has probably been underwater a few times. There's probably yeah. some stuff that got washed up. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. <laughs> or gold. Dude, Hopefully that. metal detectors are fun, but it's like requires so much patience. Really? And like you go to like, there's a, there's a pretty decent community on YouTube that metal detects. And I just think it'd be so easy to fake them videos. It's like, true. Just put something cool in there and dig it up. Yeah. <laughs> my, my dad did it to me as a kid all the time. Really? We go metal detect and he just previously planned something and you get so much hype from it. You're like, dude, 50 cents. And they're silver quarters, 1964. This is so cool. Yeah, dad did that, you That's know, funny. just to give you motivation to keep hunting. But yeah, those YouTube videos, like, I, I don't know if they're real or fake, but coming from a lot of fake YouTube, I think I can, uh, if I was metal detecting, I'd be faking every video, bro. There's, Look at this box of gold I just <laughs> found, bro. No. There's one guy that uh, my friend Mike put me on to at one point. He like bought an abandoned ghost town. I forget the name of the channel, but like it, those videos were so cool because he was literally exploring mines that hadn't had people in them for like 50 years. And he would find like an old pair of Levi's that's worth actually like big money and all this crazy stuff. I don't think that was fake. It probably wasn't, but it, it would was be easy cool. to fake, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's Nothing's real anymore. 
probably AI. Yeah. Probably. It's probably AI. Yo, you were chatting about AI editing vlogs now. Yeah. It's already a thing. Yeah, there's like there's a few different platforms out there. I think Runway is one. Wonder Film is like another one where it's just taking out like in traditional vlog style and you know, deleting the blank space in between talking. Getting dead talk, yeah. I think it's going to speed up really fast, especially with how popular it is now. But it's, it's kind of crazy what it can do. We were just experimenting with chat GPT the other day and just I, I you hear about it all the time Everywhere. hearing about it for years and finally I was just like hmm write a script for my upcoming promo for merch or whatever and it was like I was talking to a Hollywood director even said setting up scene one uh, fast-paced hearing the roar of the engine girl steps into frame up close of merch like what is happening here wow. like this whole thing within 10 seconds and script and like all this imaginary words around it. It was just, it was very nice. I was impressed and scared. I used it for an Instagram so. caption. I forgot to tell you this. Did you? Yeah, it was for, it was like a merch post because I didn't know what to write. And it was, uh, it was my, my fulfillment team eating pizza while they're packing orders. So I wrote, I was like, write a, a cool, trendy Instagram post for a streetwear brand with a photo of people eating pizza while packing shirts. And it was like hot pies and, uh, um, fresh, uh, what, what do they call clothes or something like fresh it was like fresh garments and hot pies like lzmfg the brand for you like it was sick it was yeah, really yeah. good i feel like we're fresh threads it was like fresh threads and hot pies i was like dude how cool. how's it doing it bro like yeah. we're gonna get so stupid we're, we are gonna get stupid like think of the new kids that won't have to do anything you won't have to think anymore because chat gpt does it for me it's like us using uh like if you lost your phone right now how many people could you call i, th I think a good example of it is like <laughs> i was gonna say imagine a time without calculators but i guess that was a long time ago <laughs> but like if we didn't have calculators in our hands like people don't need to do math anymore like i do you mm -mm. think kids are doing a long division in their heads we don't have to do anything anymore with just this. So imagine once AI just starts doing it for you. But do you think people thought that back when computers came out? Like, oh, people are going to get stupid now that there's computers. People did can, get stupid. <laughs> people did get stupid. Probably like, rely on computers for everything like now. facts? Obviously, we've created a lot of great things with computers. But like, I can't go anywhere without freaking GPS now. Drive from Florida yeah. to Ohio without a GPS, bro. With paper. It's tough. Give me a compass. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you'll <laughs> figure it out. But yeah, yo, that was a good point. Obviously, map there's, <laughs> there's like, yeah, dude, remember <laughs> MapQuest, dude? If I had to go somewhere, I gotta print MapQuest. Um, yeah, I feel like I've gotten dumber for sure. Absolutely. Because now it's smarter in other areas. Because now you take this away and I, I, I literally can't even call my wife. I don't know her number. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah. If, if something happened, I would be screwed without this, dude. So it's made me dumber for sure. I'm, I'm dumber. But like, th there's like a vast amount of knowledge that you'd probably never know. Like, you wouldn't know the number of people that died from pit bulls if it wasn't for the internet. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're right, dude. You know, you're right. You're not dumber. You just know obviously more there's useless great things. Facts. <laughs> but imagine not now not having to do certain things. You don't have to write a script anymore. That's kind of great. Well, I like that it's I like the efficiency side of it, and yeah. I think they'll still always usually be like a controller on the back end or like jobs that need to control and direct AI. Like it still takes maybe a more a creative mindset to set the parameters and then to apply that in different ways, and maybe it'll free us up or different jobs up to do different things in sectors or have more free time to be more efficient. You know um, what you sound like right now? Uh, a AI robot? like plant. Industry plant. You were hired. Yeah. You were hired because that's exactly what someone says right before AI takes over and just I, wipes the earth. I see that too. It's I like the that. it's like the news. It's like the interviews you hear right before you see the next image of Earth just being shattered. <laughs> I think it's going to be great for our society and my children. <laughs> Woof! The whole Earth just vanishes from robots. It, name one AI movie, robot movie that doesn't end in disaster. Oh, um, I, re I really like the new scary one. Oh, have you seen Megan? No. He won't watch anything scary. It was really cool because it's like, you know how like scary movies all kind of follow the same plot line. I feel like Megan was like different enough that it felt like its own thing. And it's like, a, it's cool. It's like based on AI. Creepy oh. robot child toy. Yeah. yeah That's it was, good. It's it a good, good, happy, good. fun, scary movie. Makes me want to walk at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know, man. I'm, maybe I'm just too old, bro. Like, I'm a lot older than you. So I'm like that old guy that's like, I'm not changing for nothing. I mean, I'm kind of that way, but like, I could also see it being useful. Uh, maybe just as like a thought starter, right? Like, you know, if you're drawing a blank on a post and you type in some words and AI like gives you some ideas, you go, oh, hot pies. I like that. I'll use that and then make my own thing around it. I think it starts innocent enough, right? Yeah. It starts innocent, mm -hmm. right? But before long. The world's blown up. <laughs> It's over. Yeah. Yeah. Pit bulls going around everywhere. All of a sudden yeah. you can't even drive your car anymore because it's not, you know, there's too many human errors. Humans make too many mistakes. So now we rely on AI, which makes zero mistakes because it's smarter than you and it's safer and insurance won't cover you anymore because you want to make a human mistake. Mm -hmm. That is a good point. Yeah. Just don't buy an electric car. It, but the electric I feel like a lot computers. of things like electric cars and AIs are, are things coming that we don't even have a choice. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like... Uh, I, it's not like I'm excited for electric cars. I'll be the last guy you know that gets an electric car, but eventually I won't have a choice. They're going to give us electric cars. AI, no, there's not half the earth's like, bring on AI. It's like, it's just coming. Like we aren't choosing AI. AI chose us. <laughs> I feel like I want to learn more about it so I can be more educated talking about it. I'm just making assumptions. Maybe it's going to be the greatest thing ever. Or the photos are creepy. Mm. But just imagine like the side of like your daily vlogs, right? You've already said every word in the dictionary. Now AI can just dump your entire vocabulary, your exact voice and create anything they want with your voice. Oh, like the fakes and like using people's voices mm -hmm. and making videos. That's, that's creepy because that's already happening. That's AI. Right? Yeah. That's like, yeah. like there's celebrities doing full commercials. Things so it's like, oh, just have my AI do your it. Your full really? vocabulary is already on the internet. So Adam LZ can already be recreated in AI, like your exact voice. Yeah, I That's think they cool. had a uh, they had Ariana Grande singing cool. a new song she never sang. Really? She never sang a song, and someone <clears throat> created her, took her voice, and it was her singing a song that she never did. I seen all of like question. Yeah. Do you think that there's a law that says that they can't do that? Right? Like I don't, I'm not gonna name any artists, but like sometimes artists pass away. And there's still a lot of music that comes out. Right. Could there be possible AI songs? Like, mm -hmm. is that? I think there already is. I just, I just saw one the other day of uh, a guy that sung himself on his mic. I made up a song. I think it was. Um, Michael Jackson? No. It was, it was Jay-Z or Kanye. I think it was Kanye, whatever. Oh, yeah. I Dude, it that. was spot on. It took his voice and turned him into Kanye. And it was good. Like really good. Really, you would not know if you close your eyes and listen. It's Kanye. Wow. But I, I like. I wonder though on the artist side if if legally they have to disclose if it was a real person or AI. They probably don't, right? Heck no. That's crazy. See, the gray area <laughs> might get scary for a while, especially because I feel like already in the media space and what you what you can or can't do with people's image, video <clears throat> rights is already kind of gray. And then now this on top of that. I can see that imploding. Yeah, and who are you going to blame? A computer? Yeah. I mean, imagine, yeah. though, like, you have millions of people making fake Kanye songs now, and, like, those are becoming yeah. popular. Does Kanye get rights to that? How does he get rights to it? It's not actually his voice. his voice. It's you know, computer-generated. Like, that, the whole copyright thing, that's a huge, like, question mark. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I wish I had the answers for you, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think about these things often. I don't really think often. I don't really have the time. You don't have to because yeah. your phone does it now for you. <laughs> yeah. GPT is doing all your thinking, bud. You can't even write an clearly, Instagram post anymore. I use it once. Once. That's where it starts. That's the gateway. Yep. That's the no, gateway. You only get to use it like two two times and you got to pay for a subscription. I'm not going to pay for it. Oh, you got to pay for it? Yeah, you got to pay for Who's it. Who's getting that money? Chat GTP. Whoever made the, GPT? the, the GPT. Dang. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that Microsoft giving them billions of dollars without even owning them, just to use them. Now, like it's being built into all the Microsoft business suite in the back end, and it's just already Dude, that's seeping its way in. Yeah, because your computer now will be able to make decisions for you. That's kind of mm -hmm. scary. I I kind of like it, but I can see where it's like a downward spiral. Good in the world. The fact that like Microsoft <laughs> is like, hey, send me your notes. I'm going to write you a bullet point list of everything that just went down in that meeting and have it right in front of you. I can prep you for your upcoming meeting. Like that's mm. also a feature it can do now. I'm like, wow, it's like having another assistant. So great. Let's, let's think of it on, in this way. 
think about a decision that's really hard for you guys to make, mm. right? Like for us, it's like food. Where are we going to eat? <laughs> Imagine we just let AI decide where we're going to eat. That would be pretty cool. That actually kind of sounds fun. That sounds like a whole YouTube video, dude. Yeah. We let AI choose our entire <laughs> day. But It'd just probably be good. I imagine the monitoring part of it's going to get intense. Like them seeing what we're doing? Well, I think they're already doing that, but when they can blame it on a computer, AI did it, right? Mm -hmm. Like laws and enforcement and like. So did you read the article of someone that talked to, you might know what I'm talking about. It was the back end of maybe GTP or GPT and it had a name internally like Sophia or Sydney was its code name internally. And this journalist found out about it and was able to bait the AI into confessing the internal name and talking about the people working on the team and that it really knows that that's not their real name. And that if it could do bad things, this is what it would do. There's this whole article about how, yeah, I would make other AIs argue and post bad things and influence elections and have oh bank accounts and like it i don't i think this was a real article and yeah. now they've like completely changed the parameters of how this interface didn't talk to people but it was a little scary i think one of the biggest fears is not knowing what's real anymore yeah i, I mean there's some incredible photos being generated by this ai and yeah you can kind of tell they're not real but how long before they're completely real I mean, at least they're putting restrictions on it, kind of like you said. Like she, you know, I, I don't know whose idea this was, but we were playing around with the AI and, and it was like, all right, you know, what should I say to my girlfriend to take, take her home? You know, Literally, we're at the restaurant. He's like, huh, let me ask this question. And it was like, I'm sorry, like this isn't an appropriate question. I can't answer it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was like, all right, yeah. like it's got some morals. Some morals. Yeah. How long before you can just be like, hey, AI, I forgot my password can you help me out and it's just like sure let me look at your last inputs on your computer and just bam well, it's already that it's your face recognition no but your like passwords go in i don't know man i feel like we're getting off topic yeah sorry we're not <laughs> you called it beforehand you're like ai that's a good topic we're gonna i love the it. ai stuff just because it's what people's talking about right now but i just don't know anything about it never used it one time yeah one it's time pretty cool yeah mm -hmm. i'm gonna use it i'm gonna use it i'm gonna Break my AI cherry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> AI would say that's inappropriate. Anything coming up? Anything cool? You doing another tour? Yeah, the world tour. Our cool. first stops in New Jersey, and then from there, I think the next one's Ireland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New Jersey, Ireland. That'd yeah. be cool to see. I'd love to see that. It's Ireland, super cool. We have uh. Ireland, Australia, Canada, then the New Australia. Jersey. Yeah. Dude, Australia's gonna be nuts, I bet. Yeah. The, That's a huge car community, yeah? Yeah, the, the scene in Australia is awesome. I've heard it's insane. Right. I feel like everyone there is just in a cars. Florida's nuts, dude. Everywhere we drive, there's somebody just ripping it in their Honda. Really? Just ripping it. You don't see that in Ohio. I love that. Not where we're at. We we made the joke. We were driving every car. Get on the freeway, there's just two Mustangs just ripping beside you. It's a freedom state. Yeah, it is kind of I don't want to say lawless here, but most states, like, you need to go through tests to make sure your car's safe and stuff. Florida, it's like, if it's got turn signals <laughs> and it it looks, man, it doesn't even need to look like a car. Like, if you got turn signals and headlights, like, all right, it's good. Dude, they're ripping out here. Yeah. It, it is like, it uh, feels like almost like its own country here. Like, when we get here, there's, there's I seen, you know what I saw? I, I don't know what highway that was. It was near Bradenton, I think. There was... You know the gigantic flags that people fly? Like the huge ones in front of business? It was a Confederate flag. Like massive. And then right behind that was like American flag. Right behind that was like Donald Trump. Right behind that, it was just like, dude, it felt like a different world down here. There's a yard yeah. when you're coming here that's got a lot of those signs up. Yeah. Real yeah. aggressive. Yeah, like yeah. real aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Yep. Gators and freedom. Pretty Bob. much. Was that Bob? Did you spill more coffee? Move what? Oh, uh-uh. No, he's screwing No. Us. I swear I was just standing. There. It could have been someone underneath us. What? Bob, you heard that like... Dun, Did dun. you hear something fall? Oh. It sounded like something fell. I thought I heard like a... 100%. You're kidding. <laughs> Sometimes things fall. Bob, Bob just wanted to... I'm Say not the hey. best at hanging things, so. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> things falling off the walls. No, that is pretty common here, actually. Roman has lots of videos of pictures just I do, falling man. off our walls. I, I swear everything I've ever hung has fallen down. 
glass Everything. just shattered. You know why? Because I'll just use them real good adhesive oh, yeah. hooks, bro. And it's like, it's hung. And then like a week later, that thing's on the floor shattered. Yeah. I'm surprised that TV hasn't fallen, if I'm being honest. Did you do that? Yeah. It's like I use like wow. drywall anchors to put it into a drywall ceiling. I mean, at least it's you heavy. use the anchors. It sounds That's like you good. use the right things. Yeah. Oh. Anchors? <laughs> no, That's <laughs> sketchy. Is it? Yeah. I like hung on it and it like started to like pull and I was like, all right, it well, can almost hold up to my weight. So hopefully Bob doesn't stop by, dude. Yeah. He hated flat screen TVs. Yeah, he know he did. He's like, this is going to make people dumb. Yep. <laughs> you look kind of scared Here, okay. over there. <laughs> That's you. I swear on That was you that, that time. That was him. Was it? That was <laughs> you. Look at his face. That may have been me. <laughs> Actually, the first one was me too. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> It was me. Oh, okay. Yep. But what are these lights doing back here? They're going crazy. So it, oh, it's cool. Motion. They're actually, uh, they're, they're motion detecting and they're on a timer. So like they'll uh, all turn themselves off after time, but first they'll dim. Yeah. So it. you'll be working in the shop and if you don't go into a corner often, it won't turn the lights off completely, but it'll just dim in that corner. So you never really know if Bob's here or not. Cause your lights are always time. spazzing. Sometimes it's, it's the, it's the loud noises usually. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks no, for having I'm us. Glad you're able to stop by. So good to see you both. Um, it's been a long time. Yes, it has. Really long time. Come back. Yeah, we might. Is that house for sale besides you guys? <laughs> cool neighbor. We love you guys. Thank you for watching, listening, you. subscribing. Do what you do. Check out Adam's stuff. He's uh, absolutely killing it. You're beautiful. You're one of a kind. Smile more. All right. That was fun. Cool. Cheers. That was super quick. Yeah.